I heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon, or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned. Can you sing with all the voices of the mountain? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? I love this song from the first time I heard it. I was 14, growing up in public housing in Western Sydney. So maybe a little too old for this Disney classic from Pocahontas. But it spoke to me. I saw something of myself in it. At this stage, I think I knew I was queer. I mean, come on, I was rocking out to Disney. <laughs> and look at those glasses. Seriously, what a queer kid. <laughs> but I was also from a Pacific Indigenous heritage with conservative views and values. I didn't feel like I could fit into any of the boxes that were being presented to me. Straight, gay, Fijian, Australian. I couldn't pick just one colour to paint with. Prior to colonisation, sexuality amongst many of our Pacific islands across the region was fluid. Men would have sex with men without the stigma or shame afforded it today. Sexual intimacy was a way of being able to connect socially and relationally. Sex wasn't just for procreation or in marriage. It wasn't exclusively monogamous. Just because you had sex with a man it didn't define your sexuality. It didn't make you an outcast. But as Europeans started to colonise the Pacific region, they brought Christian missionaries with them. They told us to cover up our beautiful bodies. We were taught shame. We were told to stop practising Pacifica cultures and values that were seen as provocative. To a Western and white perspective, our non-binary sexuality was judged as tribal, outdated, sinful, and impossible to practice alongside a Christian faith. Still today, those who are indigenous to the Pacific are negatively impacted by whiteness. That white is right, West is best. I was brought up to espouse strong Christian beliefs, views, and values, which would shape my burgeoning identity as an adult. From these staunch conservative views, I was taught to fear the queer, those people that were seen as unusual and fruity. And in essence, I grew to despise a part of myself. I sought to separate my queerness from my identity. I could never see myself as part of that world. Growing up biracial and bisexual constantly challenged the way I saw the world around me. I was unsure about my thinking, feelings and behaviours around liking males and females. I was unsure about my thinking, feelings, and behaviours when it came to whether I needed to be a white Australian or a Fijian person. And whether this needed to be framed within a binary to choose one over the other. In this way, I don't think that my story is unique. There's plenty of people in the queer world that have escaped conservative upbringings, religions, and cultures. 
But this is only part of my story. Another common story in the queer community is the coming out story. When did you tell your parents? How did they react? How it liberated you or ultimately separated you from your family. But this didn't feel like an option for me either. I believe that embedded in these particular stories, these tropes, is a part of dominant queer culture that made it very hard for me to access the queer world. For example, when I started to go to gay clubs, I would be lining up out the front of the the club, and often I would get door staff come up to me and go, "Uh, sorry, you do know this is a gay club, right? From these lived experiences, I feel that there is a a whiteness that pervades queer culture. And I didn't want to give up my identity and my appearance as a Pacific Indigenous person to be queer. Pacifica cultures really, really values and esteems the collective above the individual. For Pacifica people, our families are inextricably connected to our own sense of self-agency, self-determination, self-esteem, self-love, and self-worth. Our own individual identities are enmeshed and intertwined with our family's reputation and standing in the community. Our mind, body, and souls are inextricably connected to the broader community, to our families, to ourselves, and to others. I didn't want to come out to potentially ostracize myself, to make a point to separate myself from my Pacific and faith communities. I couldn't then see my authentic self in any of these spaces. And a quick shout out to my son on the left-hand side. Round of applause for my son. (laughs) He said to me this morning, he said, Daddy, make sure you mention me. So I was like, okay, son. All right, so there you go for the recording, son. (laughs) And the rest of my other family, that's uh, up there as well. Across queer cultures, and the broader community, we have learned to embrace our gender and sexual differences. We encourage individuals to be allies for each other and to support safe spaces for those that are seen to not fit in. We empower and really encourage individuals to really develop and and, and express their self-agency, their self-determination, their self-love, their self-worth. We boldly go into spaces, striving to bring others with us to ensure that we can create inclusive societies for everyone. However, the dominant Western view in queer cultures is still based on the individual, me, myself, and I, and my individual pursuit towards happiness. As a queer Indigenous Pacific person, I feel that there are parts of queer culture that is white, feels very white. We may fail to see the importance of bringing our families and our cultural communities along our journey as queer people. It's either the queer way or the highway. It's one or the other, young or old, rich or poor, smart or stupid, masculine or feminine, fit or fat. These binaries create a sense of us and them, those people. A binary approach and position that we generally in Western white societies use to to determine the norm. We create, conflate, perpetuate binaries that create divisions in our society. Saint or sinner, straight or gay. I see it like this. 
Binaries are a very white and Western way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. As individuals today, we live within these binaries and create identities that then create these labels. We use these labels to then define and confine people and places. We are one or the other. But what we fail to see is that our identities are more than a set of binaries. Our own identities are comprised of intersecting identifiers that contributes to who you are, including our age, class, colour, education, gender, size, spirituality, sexuality, and so, so much more. We need to decolonize queerness, to live beyond white is right, West is best. Because if we don't, we're going to continue to create silos and divisions in our societies that don't create inclusive and safe spaces for everyone. For Indigenous queer people, they shape our connection to community and culture, our families. If we don't include that within our understanding of who we are even as queer people, then we're not able to be, again, our true and authentic selves. We're not able to then be our fabulous selves as part of the queer community. And it's really, really interesting because I believe that we can learn so much from pre-colonial cultures like those that were practiced in the Pacific that provide a different way of looking at society. A queer way that predates all the privileges that go into binary ways of thinking, feeling and behaving. Across many of our Pacifica languages, we have a lot of key concepts that help solidify and support a shared understanding of the collective. For example, in Fijian, solo solo vaki is all about reciprocal living, where my well-being is your well-being. I will actively seek to ensure that your well-being and your every, every part of your life is catered for knowing that you will do the same for me. We strive to enact vengravi, as tattooed here on my hand, to serve others. We strive to also embed and embold and empower people to practice vero kovi, respect for self and others, where we are relationally driven, where that is so important to our spaces and places. My sense of ability to actually put this into practice, my ability to actually understand these indigenous perspectives has greatly helped shape and reconcile my queer identity today. But what's really interesting is that it's not just queer communities that need to decolonize itself. It's all of us as a broader society that needs to be part of a shared conversation to decolonize, deconstruct, and disrupt binary ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving. So, how can we practically do that? Practice cultural humility, where you are constantly learning and embracing differences, where you get over yourselves and strive to learn about other people's differences and how that can be meaningfully included in the way in which you create safe spaces for everyone. I also believe it's possible to bring Indigenous perspectives into Western and white workplaces. For example, I've introduced the concept of Talanoa. In all of my work meetings, Talanoa is all about being able to create a safe space where everyone is able to contribute to a collective, collegial, and collaborative conversation, where people are able to bring their authentic selves into these spaces. Literally, I will chair meetings where I have no firm set agenda items, and I literally would just hold space for participants just to bring themselves. You can tell I'm a social worker, right? <laughs> safe space, safe space, safe space, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> 
But it's through these safe spaces that people can bring their multiple intersecting identifiers, including their age, their class, colour, education, gender, size, spirituality, sexuality, and so, so much more. I invite queer communities to come Talanoa with Pacific Indigenous communities to create robust and resilient queer cultures. I have been able to greatly reconcile my queer and Pacifica identities, which has now really been embraced to help shape how I see the world around me today. And it's through these shared perspectives and approaches that we can truly embrace cultural diversity and its differences. And to know that people can live beyond those binaries and those labels we continue to perpetuate and perpetrate against others. It is a commitment from queer communities to decolonize queerness. It's a commitment from me, from you, and all of us to decolonize Western and white societies and to live beyond the binary way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. I genuinely believe that it's through this common goal that we can truly learn how to paint with all the colours of the wind. And you never hear the wolf cry to the blue corn moon For whether we are white or copper skin We need to sing with all the voices of the mountains We need to paint with all the colours of the wind You can own the earth and still all you own is earth until you can paint with all the colors of the wind. Thank you.